Welcome back to the Talking Archive. I'm Josh Jacobs. Our conversation with radio personality and voiceover talent Bill Wright continues. Now, last time we talked about different online radio stations as well as working at 96.7 Quiz. Now, I know that uh, David Nars, the son of game show legend Jack Nars, also yes. worked for Quiz. Uh, what yes. did he do? Was he an honor radio personality? Yeah, uh, uh, preceding me, he was the... Uh the the token male uh, it, it's it's funny they they always talked about the all female uh cast of quiz fm which was never fully all female just mostly <laughs> and that that featured a gal named margie kelly uh, patty martinez the daughter of uh, Bill, Mar- uh, I'm sorry, Bill Weaver, mm-hmm. and she married uh, Bill Martinez who you might know as well do, yeah. Bill's a, a really another great guy who was pd at K Orange before it was Kick FM and so forth, um, and uh, a gal named Sonny Malone, Mary Price was one of them. But Dave um, preceded me um, doing evenings, I think it was, and uh, and then by the time I um, I went full time, uh, Dave moved on. Um, but yeah, he had been at Quiz FM for quite quite some time, and. Uh, yeah, he used to regale us with stories of his of his dad and uh, Tom Kennedy, another mm-hmm. great game show host. And um, uh, Dave still has uh, a pretty active Facebook page where he'll post uh, some great old pictures of oh yeah the of uh, Jack and and uh, and all the others. It was really fun. In fact, it's the uh, Jack Nars Tom Kennedy uh, Facebook fan page, and uh, Dave has quite a. Gr- I, I they're pictures I've never seen before. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's like, wow, I can't believe the childhood pictures and and just uh, game show pictures I've never seen in my life. And I'm just like, yeah, because I grew up with uh, with Tom Kennedy and Jack Nars. Uh, yeah. Tom on Name That Tune and Jack on and, Concentration. And uh, yeah. I got to meet uh, both Tom and Jack four times at different game show events. And they got honored about uh, 18 years ago at the Game Show Congress with the Bill Cullen uh, Lifetime Achievement Award. And uh, they were honored together. And that same afternoon, Monty Hall was honored with the Ralph Edwards Community Service Award. And Shelly Berman was there to roast everybody. And, oh, my gosh, the place was just – he brought the house down. He was making fun of everybody's speeches. And so, But Tom Kennedy did get his revenge. So when Tom got his award, he said, folks, I heard that Shelly Berman's hair caught on fire last night. Fortunately, he wasn't in the room where it happened. <laughs> <laughs> that is good. That is great. <laughs> you know, uh, speaking of which, um, uh, later on in one of the, uh, the the Ford promotions where they fly out all the, the DJs to uh, remote locations to test drive stuff and then hope that we would do uh, beaming commercials uh, about them, testimonials, um, uh, one of them, um, uh, the, uh, the late Charlie Tuna was at. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they gave us CB radios in these trucks that we were test driving, which is a big mistake. You know, a bunch of DJs with a CB radio on <laughs> hand. Well, um, uh, I love Charlie to death, but he did wear a hairpiece. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, they were relentless on there. They said, this just in, you know, Charlie Tuna's hairpiece is hit me on the windshield, you know, and that sort of stuff. So I guess, uh, yeah, there's a lot of hair jokes out there. <laughs> well, Brian Roberts also wore a toupee, but Brian would play with his toupee. So sometimes he'd have it on, sometimes he'd have it off. And um, for a while, he worked at Oldies 93 where he was evenings, tar- Charlie Tune was mornings. And he had a picture of three bald men in a circle. I was like, can you spot Charlie Tune in this photograph? And <laughs> <laughs> and so when he got his uh, picture on the wall, Brian Roberts was wearing the toupee on the wall. And yeah. so Humble Harp's producer, Ken, said to me, Brian said, hey, you want to see something funny? So he is wearing his toupee when he's, you know, he he leans next to his picture on the wall and takes his rug off and pulls it off and puts it back on. And uh, <laughs> and, and, and Hurricane Allen, Gary Belsman's his real name, uh, was somebody I worked with at Oldies 93, and he and Bobby Guerra, who was a longtime uh, program director of KZLA, uh, by this time he was doing weekends at Oldies 93, and, and Hurricane said, I didn't even know Brian Roberts wore a rug until one day, you know, he and I were just having a casual conversation. Suddenly he lifts off his toupee, scratches his head, and puts it back on. 
Oh, yeah. That's, those were the days. <laughs> <laughs> my dad got me into two-page jokes and stuff, so I, 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 I blame my dad for that one. <laughs> 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 now, after, after quiz, you went to uh, the Eagle 106.3 KYMS. Um, tell us about how you got that job. Well, um, in between, I took a job at the first um, digital um, studio in Orange County. It was called Sonic Images. And uh, the aforementioned uh, the John Novak had done a voiceover up uh, where this fellow Craig Kitchens was uh, the audio engineer. And he started his own studio. He gathered the financing, and his vision was let's do things differently. So um, this was just at the rise of digital workstations. There was a company called New England Digital that produced one of the early um, digital workstations. It was called the Post Pro. Uh, they had been famous before that for this uh, great sampler called the Synclavier. Uh Anyway, this came out, and he said, i got to get me one of them. And uh, I think it was a quarter million dollars at the time. And it had all of like one gig of space, <laughs> I think, at the time, <laughs> which we thought was a lot. And uh, he started the studio, and um, John had given him my name as production director. And he said, "Would you? Um, yeah, I'm looking for some people part time to, you know, help me um, in the studio." So I, uh, I got up there and I learned how to how to get my way around digital uh, in the very early days. I thought that would be a good thing to do. He uh, hired me, and uh, as I told you, that things had changed. That quiz. I wasn't altogether pleased with the new ownership. So I jumped at the chance, and uh, it was a very interesting year that I spent there um, where um, we did uh, an entire uh, Bible, one of the first Bibles on um, CD, mm. which was mastered digitally. We did a, um, a five-hour radiothon for St. Jude's uh, Children's Hospital, Danny Thomas's uh, mm -hmm. great, great charitable enterprise. And um, I met some great people there, and, and it was really um, big into audio sweetening for industrial videos and so forth, whereby, you know, you'd, you'd take may maybe fairly bad audio, you'd repair it, you'd add some echo or reverb and, you know, put it, lay it back on. So I learned all about that. But uh, the problem with a $250,000 piece of gear is you have to charge a lot more uh, per hour to the clients, and they just weren't interested in, you know, how cool it was. They just, you know, they preferred the $85 an hour uh, studio to the $300 an hour studio, and it wasn't a viable uh, enterprise. So uh, one day he told me, I, I, I can't pay you anymore. You're welcome to stay on <laughs> if you don't mind working for free. And I said, well, you know, by that time I had uh, two children, and I thought, I think I'd better look for something else. So uh, it was just really um, uh, providential that, um, first of all, I got a call from a friend of mine at the um, Academy of Radio Broadcasting in Huntington Beach, and they asked me to come over and do some part-time teaching over there, so that was something. Mm -hmm. And then while I was there, I got a call from, um, I had worked with uh, someone else, you probably know Dave Armstrong, oh, yeah. uh, who was my uh, GM at Quiz for many years. Mm -hmm. And said that uh, they were looking to uh, to fill a position at KYMS as um, an afternoon drive uh, host, and also um, the program director at the time uh, was doing um, some sales and needed an operations manager to do the the nuts and bolts, uh, working with the air staff and so forth. So that was part of my job, and I I was happy to take it, and I was there from uh, the end of 1990. Uh, through the end of 1991. So, um, yeah, about a year and, and change. Wow. Now, Nashville is the hub of Christian music, but back then, Orange County, you had quite a scene as well, especially with alternative artists from uh, the Lifesavers to um, Undercover to Crystal Lewis, who is more, you know, like dance pop. Um, mm -hmm. How often do musicians come into the uh, studio? Well, See, KYMS was, was really like the contemporary Christian music station um, in Southern California at the time. Now, what's amazing about that is uh, it was a 3,000-watt signal. Uh, you can still see the tower if you're driving down the Santa, Santa Ana 5 freeway, mm -hmm. um, right around Main Street in Santa Ana. Um, 
yet somehow in some way uh, because you know FM is usually a line of sight phenomenon so the higher above average terrain the better but KYMS it it, it, it got into LA pretty well mm-hmm. and um, and certainly down a little bit uh, you know towards North San Diego and um, uh, because what they were doing was kind of unique, because, I mean, before that, you know, you thought of Christian radio or religious radio. You thought hymns. You <laughs> thought um, a much older demographic. So this was kind of like, yeah, you know, almost top 40 for with a Christian bent. And mm-hmm. um, we had some really, you know, great bands. You mentioned some of them. We had uh, Stryker for... Um, uh, striper for uh, some of the heavier rockers than us. Uh, well, you know, Michael yeah. W. Smith, Amy Grant was big at the time. And um, we were the um, R&R uh, power reporting station as far as contemporary Christian radio was. So if we were playing it, it was on the map. Wow. Um, I was there, again, a little later in the game, because it, it kind of rose up in the 80s. Mm-hmm. Um, and about the time that I got there, uh, Dave Armstrong had um, uh, rebranded it, so it was Eagle 106.3, mm-hmm. uh, and um, it was, um, we had bumper stickers and the, and the whole nine yards. We had a lot of people coming through, so Crystal Lewis would be with us. Um, we, we had, um, uh, oh gosh, I'm trying to remember all the all the people. We had the clean comedians that were... Um, just getting started at the time. These were a great bunch of comics that didn't want to use a lot of four letter or any four letter words in their mm-hmm. in their comedy. So they were great um, for uh, for us. Um, and um, um, Michael Card. We just we had a number of people come through. Um, Jim Governale probably could could <laughs> remember more oh, yeah. than I was because I was only there for about a year. But I really loved. Uh, I really loved the music. It was great, and uh, the station was 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 wonderful, and some very good air talent went through there as well. Mm-hmm. Um, Jimmy Hudson uh, was one I interviewed last yes, year. Yes, Austin Hill, who again we lost him way too early, uh, oh, yeah. went on to uh, doing talk radio at KFI and and, and others, and uh, it uh, it was just very sad. He was um, I was at his wedding, and uh, Randy Stonehill uh, played. Uh, for him there, just a measure of of, of how much uh, uh, he was well respected in 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 those circles. Wow, Randy so, Stonehill, he's yeah. awesome. Yeah, it was really great, great stuff. And we had uh, uh, a gal named Jamie Mayberry uh, was very popular uh, on our midday. Later, Lori Campbell, mm-hmm. uh, who did evenings. Jim Governor, who did after, who did uh, middays as well. And then I was doing afternoon drives for about a year. Oh wow. That's great to know that you and Jimmy G got to work there together. I wasn't oh, sure yeah, that lovely. did happen. Because um, Jimmy was there for, what, four years, five years, I think it was? Yeah, he was still there when I left. Uh, so, yeah, he was, he was there a good, a good few years. And, uh, you know, it was, it was wonderful because Dave uh, would hire right out of the Fullerton College program. And um, uh, he gave great opportunities to people, including mm-hmm. a fellow that uh, was blind. He actually had to have an assistant with him, but they gave him the opportunity. His name was Rusty Perez, and he was really good. Wow. And um, you, you wouldn't have known. He couldn't see a thing, but uh, he would, um, if there was any live copy to be done, uh, it would be transcribed into Braille for him, and he, he, he was a real pro. So um, yeah, some great people came through there as well. Yeah, in fact, I uh, worked with also Brian Perez and Chandler Haney, um, uh, Chan, Chan the man, as we call yeah. him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was great. He told me some uh, great stories about uh, KYMS and how it was like really organic as far as you know the music was concerned, and it really had that local feel that unfortunately a lot of radio doesn't have these days. Um, where it was just, uh, he said, and then Dave, you know, had that unique spin to it as well. Um, Dave Armstrong, a couple of years later, became manager of KKLA 99.5. And after KYMS went off the air, he started Christian Pirate Radio Online. And yeah. uh, at its peak, it was the second most listened to online only music station just behind Virgin UK. Yeah, wow. Yeah, Dave. Yeah. That that's really something, and especially because you know you had to be directed there. It's not like you had a push button on your car radio. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, definitely. 
Uh, but Dave had the uh, the know how to do it, and uh, just uh, yeah, I miss him. Um, he uh, I think he's working kind of freelance right now because uh, he um, was at Salem for about twenty years. First yeah. at KKLA, then he was in New York for about three years. Turned that around, but he was he, he hated the cold, so he came uh, to San Diego, where he was for about eight years, nine years. And I heard recently he was kind of consulting uh, Immaculate Heart Radio, where uh, where Jimmy G now is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a real uh, a real mover and shaker in our business, and uh, gave a lot of us uh, a lot of opportunities. And uh, um, you know, really, um, again, at the time when I started at KYMS, uh, him remembering working with me, uh, he really uh, rescued me out of the out of unemployment at that time, uh, which. Uh, I'm forever grateful for. Plus, he also uh, helped me a lot um, in in my voiceover uh, business on the side, uh, where he turned me on to, it's, it's kind of interesting, uh, a fellow that did online messaging. Uh, and uh, these are the people that put together, you know, when you're called a gas company and they put you on hold, mm-hmm. and then you, you know, you tell people about some of the services of the gas company. Um, and... Um, uh, anyhow, Dave hooked me up there, and I did 25 years once or twice a week. I was in there doing these little on-hold messages, wow. which um, uh, put some food on the table. It was really a, a, a nice regular thing uh, to do as one peg of the one leg of the stool. You know, he tried to do non non uh, industrial stuff and commercial stuff, and a little of this, a little of that. And uh, for those of us that you know weren't uh, recognizable movie stars and stuff in the highest demand in in LA voiceover um you know we 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 subsisted on the crumbs and the crumbs could be pretty darn good if you got enough of them there you go. and they were fun to do i love crumbs uh sometimes <laughs> <laughs> especially if it's my favorite like you know treat or like you know those cheetos or something like that um now <laughs> those kind <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> hey, Chester, where are you? And we're in the middle of a conversation with Bill Wright, radio personality and voiceover talent. And next time, Bill discusses how he got teamed up with Sylvia Amarito on a major Southern California radio station.